Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host. Hey there, marvellous family. Today, we're diving headfirst into some serious gaming nostalgia with our latest blast from the past, Top 50 Sega Dreamcast Games. Strap in, because we're about to revisit the console that had us all hooked with its cool vibes and killer games. We're talking about everything from Shenmue, where you're basically living in another world, to Sonic Adventure 2, where you're running around at the speed of sound. These aren't just games, they're the legends that made Dreamcast the icon it is. So, whether you're a diehard Dreamcast fan, or just curious about what the fuss was all about, you're in for a treat. Without any further ado, let's jump into this awesome gaming time machine and see why these games were the talk of the town. Shenmue 1 and 2. Alright, buckle up for a blast from the past with Shenmue 1 and 2, where you'll dive into a gripping tale of revenge, martial arts and mystery. Let's picture this. It's 1986, and you are Ryo Hazuki, a teenage jiu-jitsu artist with a heart full of vengeance and fists ready for action. Your world turns upside down when you witness your father's murder by the enigmatic Lan Di, who swipes a mysterious artifact, the Dragon Mirror. Burning for revenge, you go on a thrilling journey from the streets of Yokosuka, Japan, in Shenmue, to the bustling home of Hong Kong in Shenmue 2. Gameplay? Oh, it's a jar full of awesomeness. Blend intense jiu-jitsu combat with Sherlock Holmes level sleuthing. Sprinkle in some RPG elements and don't forget the cherry on top, those iconic mini-games. <laughs> Shenmue pioneered open world exploration, where your actions sync with the in-game world's day-night cycle, weather changes and the lives of NPCs who are more than just window dressing. Shenmue was a game ahead of its time. Imagine experiencing a living, breathing world on your console in the early 2000s. It's like being handed the keys to a time machine. Plus, it introduced the gaming world to quick time events, QTEs, now a staple in modern gaming. It's the game that made Dreamcast owners feel like the cool kids on the block. Ryo Hazuki's quest for vengeance. <laughs> More than just any other game, it's a Dreamcast legacy. Yeah. Jet Set Radio Jet Set Radio on the Dreamcast is this insane inline skating and graffiti game that you just have to check out. Here's the scoop. You're in the GG's, this super cool gang of skaters tearing it up in Tokyo too. Your gig? Skate like a pro. Tag everything in sight with graffiti and stay one step ahead of rival gangs and Captain Onishima with his relentless riot police. You're in for a wild ride, tagging your way through places like Shibuya Cho, Benton and Kagani Dockyard, all while ducking the cups. The gameplay is where Jet Set Radio really knocks it out of the park. Picture yourself skating at breakneck speeds through Tokyo 2, your backpack jangling with spray cans. Your job is to hit every graffiti spot, dodge the authorities, and take on other gangs. Pulling off graffiti is all about nailing those slick controller moves or mashing buttons, depending on how big a tag you're laying down. Run low on paint? No sweat. Just grab more cans lying around, watch your health, and don't forget to bust out some awesome tricks for bonus points. So, what makes this game a Dreamcast must have? Hmm, well, it's got this super cool cell shaded art style that was groundbreaking back then, plus a soundtrack that's a perfect mix of late 90s Japanese pop and American hip-hop. Jet Set Radio isn't just a game, it's the ultimate graffiti spraying, copy vading inline skating party. The streets of Tokyo are your playground, where your skates are the paintbrush and the city <laughs> your canvas. Sonic Adventure 2 The high-speed world of Sonic Adventure 2 awaits you on a heart-throbbing journey. This Dreamcast classic is where you zoom through as Sonic Tails and Knuckles to save the world from the notorious Shadow, Dr. Eggman and Rouge. The plot thickens with secret weapons, mistaken identities, and a dash of interstellar threats. The game plays a thrilling mix of styles. You've got Sonic and Shadow zipping through fast-paced platforming levels, while Tails and Eggman are locked in mech suits for some explosive multi-directional shooting. And for the treasure hunters, Knuckles and Rouge are your go-to for action-packed exploration, seeking out those elusive Master Emerald Shards. The levels are diverse, ranging from bustling cities to mysterious jungles and even outer space, keeping you on your toes with boss fights and an intertwining hero and dark campaign. This game rocks on the Dreamcast, bringing supercharged, high-energy gameplay and a cool mix of different character journeys to the table. Its graphical strength and super-attractive locations inspired by American scenery and the innovative Chow Virtual Pet System make it a standout title for the console. So, whether you're grinding rails with Sonic or hunting treasures with Knuckles. Sonic Adventure 2 is an unforgettable Dreamcast adventure where saving the world never looked so cool. Sonic 
Skies of Arcadia. Set sail in the skies with Skies of Arcadia, another Dreamcast RPG gem where you play as Vice, a daring young air pirate. Your mission is to thwart the value and Empire's plan to unleash ancient weapons capable of world destruction. It's a high-flying adventure with a noble course. Traverse six unique regions in your airship, engage in turn-based battles and hunt for hidden discoveries. The game's map starts blank, beckoning you to chart it out. On land, navigate through cities and mazes, with plenty of treasures and tricky enemies awaiting. The battle system is a clever dance of spirit points, magic points, and a multicolored moonstone system, making every encounter both strategic and exciting. What makes this one a Dreamcast standout is how beautifully it captures the essence of adventure and exploration in a way that few others do. The game's development pedigree, with ties to iconic series like Sonic and Sakura Wars, ensures a one-of-a-kind experience. Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur offers a high-octane weapon-based fighting experience that's a staple of the Dreamcast era. Here's the scoop. The series spins a tale around two mythical swords, the evil Soul Edge and its noble counterpart, Soul Calibur. Set in a fantastical version of the 16th and 17th centuries, the plot revolves around warriors from across the world drawn into the battle between these two swords. Coming to the gameplay now, it's all about mastering a mix of horizontal and vertical weapon attacks, kicks and blocks. The iconic guard impact defense system lets you repel attacks and turn the tide of battle. Each installment spices things up with new features, like the ring out condition, where you can win by knocking your opponent out of the arena, and the eight-way run system that revolutionized 3D movement in fighting games. The game is one of the best attractions on the Dreamcast for its fluid combat, stunning graphics, and innovative mechanics. Plus, the series' evolving story and character roster have kept fans hooked for years. In the world of Soul Calibur, the sky is the limit, so you can go nuts with your weapon and carve your destiny as you wish. New Age of Heroes Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes Get ready to unleash your inner superhero or villain as we discuss this next one. That's right, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes is a crossover extravaganza where worlds collide. In this game, you assemble a dream team of three characters from both the Marvel Universe and Capcom's legendary gaming roster. <laughs> Sounds exciting, right? The gameplay here is a wild tag team based brawl. You'll be juggling between characters, each with unique assist moves ranging from devastating attacks to nifty heals. The variable system lets you switch fighters on the fly, creating dynamic and strategic combat. Plus, the hyper combo gauge has another layer of tactics, allowing you to unleash earth shattering moves or simultaneous team hyper combos. This game rocks on Dreamcast due to the visual feast it brings to the table, from 2D character sprites and 3D backgrounds, <laughs> a first for the series. The massive roster and the depth of gameplay make it not just a great fighting game, but a celebration of two iconic universes. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is where the clash of titans happens in your living room. And it's not just about winning, you'll get to witness Spider-Man team up with Ryu or Wolverine and going claw to claw with Mega Man. <laughs> a crossover showdown for the ages. Crazy Taxi. Next up, we have Crazy Taxi, where you go on a wild ride as a taxi driver on a mission to earn big bucks. Originally hitting arcades in 1999 and later the Sega Dreamcast in 2000, this game became a fan favorite for its high octane gameplay and quirky style. The plot's simple yet addictive. You can nip around a fictional city, picking up passengers and racing against the clock to drop them off at their destinations. The twist? The crazier your driving stunts, like near misses and insane jumps, the more tips you earn. Each passenger has a timer adding urgency to your mad dash across town. This game was a smash hit on the Dreamcast for several reasons. It perfectly captured that arcade rush, delivering fast, frenetic gameplay It was easy to pick up but tough to master. The game also offered all sorts of wacky stunts and time pressure gameplay, which then combined with the iconic punk rock soundtrack from The Offspring and Bad Religion made it an unforgettable experience for the players. All in all, you get to drive like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> the fare would be high, but so would be the adrenaline. Virtua Tennis! Virtua Tennis. Now, grab your racket and get ready to serve up some action with Virtua Tennis, also known as Power Smash in Japan. Developed by Sega AM3, this game brings the thrill of professional tennis to your fingertips. Initially launched for arcades, it quickly found its way onto the Sega Dreamcast and other major consoles, letting players everywhere join in on the court action. The game plays straightforward, but uh, <laughs> trust me when I say this, it'll keep you hooked for hours. You can compete in tennis tournaments and a variety of arcade modes, smashing and volleying your way to victory. The series is known for its fluid realistic gameplay and easy 
multi-tone controls, making it accessible to gamers of all skill levels. With each new installment, players have been treated to improved graphics, more courts, and expanded player rosters, including top female tennis stars like Serena Williams and Lindsay Davenport. What makes Virtua Tennis a smash hit on the Dreamcast is its lifelike tennis action and crisp graphics. You really get to show off the console's capabilities with this one. Whether you're already a tennis champ in the virtual world or just grabbing your racket for the first time, Virtua Tennis keeps things exciting with every shot you make. Ikaruga Ikaruga is another shoot 'em up sensation. It's more than just a game of dodging and shooting. Developed by Treasure, this game hit arcades in 2001 and soon became a cult classic. You play as Shinra, a rebel pilot steering the Ikaruga, a fighter with a unique twist. It can switch between black and white polarities. Ah, this is not just about shooting enemies, it's about choosing the right colour at the right time. Absorb bullets of the same colour and avoid the opposite. It's a bullet ballet of strategy and reflexes. The game plays both quick decisions and heart pounding action. Each level tests your ability to switch polarities, maximizing damage on enemies and absorbing the bullets to unleash devastating attacks. With no power-ups, it's all about skill. Chain attacks of the same color for massive scores or try Bullet Eater mode where you dodge without firing a shot. Yeah. This game really transformed the shoot 'em up genre with its polarity switching mechanics, offering fresh take among many gamers. To sum it up, it's where quick reflexes meet quick thinking. It tests both your shooting and strategic skills, every shot a chance to change your fate. NFL 2K2. Strap on your helmet and get ready for NFL 2K2, a game that blitzes onto the Dreamcast with the energy and excitement of a fourth quarter comeback. Released by Sega and developed by Visual Concept, it's a football game that gives the titans of the genre a run for their money. In this game, the gameplay is where the magic happens. It's fast, fun, and filled with the kind of arcade-like qualities that'll have football purists and casual fans alike cheering from their couches. The game stands out with its superb control. Your players respond instantly to every command, making it feel like a real NFL quarterback calling their shots. The running game has been ramped up, with ball carriers moving fluidly and responding dynamically to your inputs. And the line play? Oh, it's a game changer, making you feel like you're right there in the trenches. What sets NFL 2K2 apart on the Dreamcast is its sheer playability and the way it captures the essence of NFL football. The game's AI is challenging and keeps you on your toes, ensuring that every match is as thrilling as a real NFL game. This is a full-on football fiesta that showed the world that Sega is a sports power. House. Morning, a dark cloud fills the sky, and then a huge shadow blankets the entire world with roar. But she Power Stone 2. Power Stone 2 turbocharges the fighting game genre with its chaotic elements, item-fueled brawls, and a delightful roster of characters. Set in a world that almost pops out of the screen, players can duke it out using everything from tables and chairs to rocks in a frantic quest for victory. Coming to the gameplay now, this one's a multiplayer extravaganza with four modes. One-on-one -on -one is classic two-character battles, arcade is four-character showdowns, original is freestyle multiplayer, and lastly, adventure mode takes you on a wild item-collecting journey. The game boasts five initial 3D stages, plus two boss stages and three extra unlockable ones. No blocking here, just dodge and attack, transforming into a more potent form after snagging three power stones. The stages evolve mid-battle, like a plane disintegrating into a skydive fight, adding layers of fun and unpredictability. Power Stone 2 is a Dreamcast gem because it encapsulates the console spirit. Bold, innovative, and a tad quirky. Its arcade roots shine through with fast-paced, engaging gameplay that's perfect for couch co-ops. The Dreamcast's capability to transform arcade experiences into home console magic is fully realized here, with vibrant graphics and smooth controls adding to the allure. Sonic Adventure. In Sonic Adventure, the blue blur is back and in 3D. This time, Sonic, along with Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Big, and E102 Gamma, races to collect the Chaos Emeralds and thwart the nefarious Dr. Robotnik from unleashing Chaos, an ancient, powerful evil. Each character, with their unique abilities, navigates through a series of challenges and puzzles, all in a quest to save the world from impending doom. Gameplay-wise, you get to dive into a thrilling 3D platform adventure where you control one of six characters, bringing their own flair to the game 
gameplay. Sonic sprints and spins. Tails takes flight. Knuckles punches and climbs. Amy hammers her way through. Big goes fishing. And Gamma shoots lasers. The game's world is expansive, with adventure fields serving as open-ended hubs leading to action-packed stages. Mini games like racing and sunboarding add extra fun, while Chow Gardens offer a virtual pet experience, deepening the game's charm. Sonic Adventure thrives as a Dreamcast duel because it perfectly captures the essence of Sonic in a new dimension. It's a technological marvel that showcases the Dreamcast's power with stunning graphics and fluid gameplay. The transition from 2D to 3D is seamless, the spirit of Sonic alive while producing innovative features. It really tests Dreamcast's capability to bring cutting-edge gaming experiences to the living room. Resident Evil Code Veronica Resident Evil Code Veronica is a survival horror that takes a chilling turn. Set three months after the terrors of Raccoon City, the story follows Claire and Chris Redfield as they grapple with a viral outbreak on a remote prison island and a research facility in Antarctica. With a European Gothic horror twist, the siblings navigate through the twisted world of Umbrella Corporation, uncovering dark secrets and battling the undead. This installment retains classic Resident Evil gameplay, but elevates it with real-time 3D environments and dynamic cameras movement. Players alternate between Claire and Chris, each with their own harrowing storyline. You'll solve puzzles, manage limited inventory, use a range of weapons to fend off menacing foes. The game introduces a mix of healing herbs and a battle mode post-game, featuring infinite ammo and new playable characters for an adrenaline-pumping experience. The game is a dream to play as it utilizes Dreamcast's advanced capabilities to deliver quite realistic graphics and fluid controls. It's a title that speaks to the console's power in bringing complex, immersive worlds to life, setting a new standard for the survival horror genre. Every shadow here whispers danger, and the truth is as twisted as the corridors you wander. Fantasy Star Online Fantasy Star Online offers a super cool storyline where thousands of refugees fleeing their doomed home planet arrive at planet Rhaegol. But things go awry when Pioneer 2, their spaceship, loses contact with Pioneer 1 colonists after a mysterious explosion. Players step into the shoes of adventurers investigating this disaster, battling monstrous entities and tracking down Rico Tyrell, the daughter of Pioneer 2's head honcho. Their journey uncovers an ancient, sinister evil lurking on Rhaegol, Dark Falls. This trailblazer Blazing action RPG mixes cooperative online play with thrilling real-time combat. Choose your race and class, finding your abilities and playstyle. Whether solo or in a team of up to four, you'll explore Rhaegol's diverse environments, forests, caves, mines, ruins, each ending in a climactic boss battle. Communication is key, with a chat system that includes auto-translation for seamless cooperation. Quests offer specific challenges with rewarding loot, and your faithful mag companion evolves to assist in battles. It's an engaging blend of exploration, strategy, and heart-pounding action. Fantasy Star Online is a dream come true to hop on for being the first console game to bring the magic of online RPG adventures to your living room. It's a game that not only defined a genre, but also showcased the Dreamcast's lively spirit in online gaming. The House of the Dead 2 Next up, we have The House of the Dead 2, which throws you into a heart-pounding, zombie-infested nightmare in Venice, Italy. Following the events of the first game, AMS agents James Taylor and Gary Stewart, along with their team, dive into the city to investigate a zombie outbreak and locate their missing colleague, Agent G. They uncover a sinister plot by businessman Caleb Goldman, who's continuing the dark experiments of the infamous Dr. Curian. It's a race against time to stop Goldman, save civilians, and put an end to the undead horror. This sequel amps up the classic light gun shooter experience. With an auto-reload feature, players navigate through a rail shooter adventure, blasting through hordes of zombies and rescuing civilians along the way. Health is a precious commodity, lost when you're attacked or accidentally shoot a civilian. The game's branching paths add replayability, with different routes and stages based on your actions. And of course, epic boss battles against grotesque monsters like Judgment and the Magician keep the adrenaline pumping. This game perfectly matches the Sega Dreamcast, showcasing the console's powerful ability to bring arcade-quality experiences home. It's in Intense gameplay, paired with the Dreamcast's unique controller and graphics capabilities, creates an experience you simply can't forget.
Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver. Set in the dark and decaying world of Nosgoth, Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver takes you into a tale of revenge and redemption. Raziel, once a vampire lieutenant under the powerful Cain, is betrayed and executed. Revived as a wraith by the mysterious Elder God, Raziel embarks on a vengeful quest, sharing his name with Cain's own soul-devouring sword, the Soul Reaver. The game is a riveting exploration of Nosgoth's doomed fate, with Raziel seeking to unravel his past and alter the grim future of his world. This action-adventure Marvel lets you control Raziel, a spectral vampire navigating both the material and spectral realms. The game plays a clever blend of combat, puzzle solving, and exploration. Switching between realms is key to progress, with each offering unique challenges and abilities. Combat is a mix of hack and slash against various enemies, including humans, spectral beings, and vampires, each requiring different strategies to defeat. Raziel's evolving powers, like phasing through gates and swimming, add depth to the gameplay, along with the use of the Soul Reaver and other weapons to vanquish enemies. The game really stands out on the Dreamcast for its inventive use of dimensional shifts and stunning graphics that bring the haunting world of Nosgoth to life. Garou, Mark of the Wolves Coming in hot is Garou, Mark of the Wolves. A jewel in the crown of the Fatal Fury series continues the legacy with its intense fighting dynamics. Although it strays from the traditional Fatal Fury storyline, it introduces a new generation of fighters, including Rock Howard, the protégé of the legendary Geese Howard. Set in a vibrant world where fierce warriors clash, the game tells a story of competition, legacy, and honor as fighters battle to prove their worth in the ring. This 2D fighter strips back to basics, ditching the lane system of previous games for a more traditional, single-plane fighting experience. The innovative Tactical Offense Position TOP system adds strategic depth, offering players enhanced abilities when their health falls within a certain range. The Just Defend mechanic rewards skillful blocking with health recovery and quick counterattacks. Players strive for high ranks in each battle, with the ultimate goal of facing the elusive boss Kane R. Henline, but only if their skills are sharp enough. Additionally, the Dreamcast version spices things up with a survival mode, pushing players to their limits. Garou, Mark of the Wolves is one of the most popular due to its crisp visuals and responsive controls, all hallmarks of the console's capabilities. The Dreamcast's hardware brings the game's intricate character designs and fast-paced action to life, making it a must-play for fans of the genre and the console alike. It's safe to say that in this game, fists fly and every match is a step closer to glory on the Dreamcast. Metropolis Street Racer Metropolis Street Racer, aka MSR, revs up the racing genre with its innovative approach to street racing. Set against the backdrops of London, Tokyo, and San Francisco, players race through realistically recreated cities. With no direct plot, the game focuses on the journey of a street racer, striving to rise through the ranks in a world where style is just as important as speed. The game introduces the QDOS system, a unique feature where players are rewarded for both their racing prowess and their flair on the streets. Challenges in MSR from hot lap and one-on-one -on -one races to street races and championships. Each challenge is designed to test both speed and style, with successful completion unlocking new cars and tracks. The game's attention to detail extends to its use of the Dreamcast's internal clock to mirror real-world time in each city, adding an extra layer of immersion. The Dreamcast's graphical capabilities beautifully render the game's cityscapes, and its internal clock feature is ingeniously used to reflect real-time day-night cycles, enhancing the game's realism. This innovative use of the Dreamcast features, coupled with MSR's unique gameplay mechanics, makes it a standout title for the console. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Fight for the Future punches up the fighting game scene with its story and iconic characters. As the final chapter of the Street Fighter 3 series, it continues the saga with a mix of familiar faces and intriguing new contenders. Among the fresh additions, Chun-Li returns seeking answers, while newcomers like the mysterious Q and Shapeshifter 12 add to the intrigue. Each character fights for their own reasons, from personal quests to seeking revenge, making every battle a clash of not just fists, but also with wills and stories. Third Strike refines the Street Fighter formula, enhancing its technical depth and complexity. The roster boasts 19 characters, each with unique moves and abilities. The game introduces the Red Parry system and a comprehensive grading judgment system that scores players on various aspects of their play. The single-player mode is a gauntlet of 10 opponents, including a character-specific rival and the formidable Gil as the final boss. Iconic minigames like Parry the Ball and Crush the Car return, adding variety and nostalgia to the mix. All in all, you get to stay into a ring where every punch, parry, and Hadouken ah, is a step closer to becoming a fighting legend. <laughs> so, uh, you get the hype.
Dead or Alive 2. Dead or Alive 2 immerses players in a world of martial arts. After Doatech's big boss, famed Douglas, kicks the bucket, the world of martial arts goes haywire. There's this nasty Tengu, Goyakamine, Bankotsubo, stirring up trouble and messing with the peace. Plus, the Dead or Alive tournament isn't just about fighting anymore. It's got a darker twist with the new bosses in charge. Fighters from all over are jumping in, each with their own reasons, be it for revenge or honor. The gameplay? <laughs> it's like a crazy game of rock, paper, scissors with punches throws and holds that keep you on your toes. DOA 2 ups the ante with a cool stun system, stages that change levels and fights that have you slipping on ice or splashing in the water. <laughs> and get this, there's a tag battle mode where you can team up and pull off some awesome combo moves. The fighter lineup is a sweet mix of old and new, all with their own stories and killer moves. Now on the Dreamcast, this one is a total gem. It uses the Dreamcast's power to pump out some seriously slick graphics and smooth animations. It's like having an arcade in your living room. Plus, the Dreamcast controller makes the fights feel super real. Trust me, it's a blast. Samba de Amigo Samba de Amigo on the Dreamcast is all about diving into the fun of Latin American beats. Ay, 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 ay. Cha, cha, cha. Picture this, you're playing as Amigo, this super fun Brazilian monkey, and your job is to keep the party rocking. Just shake those maracas to the rhythm and watch the energy go through the roof. The better you get, the more the party pumps up, and all sorts of characters start joining in the dance-off. The gameplay's a blast. You've got these maraca controllers, and you've got to shake them in time with a mix of Latin tunes and pop hits. It's easy to start, but a real challenge to master, matching your moves to the beat at different heights on the screen. Plus, there are all these cool modes like arcade and party, each throwing some quirky challenges at you. And the Dreamcast version? Well, it's next level with sensors tracking your every move, making it super immersive. Seriously, this one's a perfect fit for the Dreamcast. The graphics are bright and fun, the controls are spot on, and those maraca controllers? <laughs> There's something else. It's not just another rhythm game, it's a whole new way to get into the groove. Choo Choo Rocket Choo Choo Rocket on the Dreamcast takes you to a quirky world of Choo Choo's. Well, Choo Choo's are these little mice who are in a big jam. Capu Capus, aka some really sneaky cats, have invaded their spaceport, and it's up to you to save the day. Your mission is to help these Choo Choo's zoom off to safety in their rockets. It's a light-hearted story, but don't let that fool you. <laughs> the puzzles are super chaotic and a whole lot of fun. In the game, you're setting arrows on the board to direct these Choo Choo's to their rockets, all while dodging those Capu Capus. There are loads of ways to play, like single-player puzzles, creating your own puzzles, team challenges and competitive multiplayer madness. In the multiplayer mode, where you can have up to four players, the aim is to hustle as many choo-choos as you can into your rocket before time runs out. <laughs> Talk about intense. This game's a perfect showcase of the Dreamcast's strengths. It handles quick multiplayer games like a champ. It was even the first Dreamcast game to jump into online multiplayer, really showing off what network gaming could be. The Dreamcast brings the game to life with vibrant, colourful graphics and loads of characters, making it an awesome gaming experience. Quake 3 Arena Quake 3 Arena switches things up from the older games by going all in on multiplayer action, ditching the usual single-player storyline. The game has a simple plot. The greatest warriors from various realms are snatched to fight in the arena eternal for the amusement of these beings called the Vadrigar. Mm -hmm. You get to see some familiar faces from the Quake and Doom series duking it out in this never-ending tournament of power and prowess. Gameplay-wise, it's this high-speed first-person shooter where you're either battling it out with other players or AI bots in different combat combat arenas. The game wraps up the challenge with each tier, throwing tougher enemies and more complex maps your way. There are several modes like Free For All, Team Deathmatch, Tournament and Capture the Flag. It's all about finding the right balance with your weapons, strategizing your moves based on the map layouts, and grabbing iconic items like the Quad Damage Power-Up and the BFG Super Weapon. <laughs> Plus, mastering cool moves like Strafe Jumping and Rocket Jumping is crucial if you want to ace the game. On the Dreamcast, Quake 3 Arena is a total showstopper. It has crisp graphics and smooth gameplay that really push what the console can do, offering an adrenaline-pumping multiplayer experience. Thanks to the Dreamcast Online features, it became a go-to game for early online competitive gaming right in your living room. Space Channel 5 Space Channel 5 on the Dreamcast is this wild, rhythm-based game that throws you back to a 1960s-style sci-fi world. You get to play as Ooh La La, a cool space reporter for Space Channel 5. The story gets all kinds of crazy when Ooh La La starts digging into an alien invasion by these beings called Marolians. She's got to deal with rival reporters and even stumbles upon a sneaky plot by her boss, Chief Blank. Imagine space news mixed with dance-offs, all set to tunes that'll have you tapping your feet. The gameplay is all about keeping up with 
with the rhythm. You're helping Ulala match the moves and chants of whoever she's up against. There are four stages where you dance and battle to the beat, kind of like playing Simon Says. Plus, there are shooting parts where Ulala saves hostages and faces off with enemies. Doing well in these bits cranks up your ratings, which you need to move through the story. And the boss battles, <laughs> they really up the ante, with Ulala's health shown as hearts that drop if you mess up. Space Channel 5 is a real banger on the Dreamcast. It's a perfect match for the console's knack for mixing great music, eye-catching graphics, and unique gameplay. The rhythm-based action works so well with the Dreamcast controls, making it a must-play for anyone who loves this system. Headhunter. Headhunter is this action-packed adventure game set in a near-future city that's a lot like Los Angeles. The twist? Well, criminals are not just thrown in jail. They lose their organs in underwater arena battles to benefit the rich. Ugh. You've got the anti-crime network, ACN, and their headhunters, like bounty hunters, keeping things in check. In this world, regular guns are out. It's all about electric neural projectile guns that stun without damaging organs. You play as Jack Wade, an amnesiac ex-headhunter. He wakes up in a hospital and has to re earn his license by acing virtual reality tests and capturing dangerous criminals, all while uncovering a murder mystery with help from some allies and competition from a rival, Hank Redwood. Gameplay-wise, it's mostly a third-person shooter where you control Jack. There are also racing game bits where you zip around on a motorcycle using the Dreamcast's analog trigger buttons pretty slick. The gameplay switches between shooting, racing, and tackling these intense virtual reality tests. You'll get a little bit of everything from some 80s action movie vibes to mind-blowing sci-fi elements, plus the innovative of use of Dreamcast controls for both shooting and racing sequences. Uh -huh. It's a game that shows off what the console can do with a story and gameplay that's just addictive. Blue Stinger. Blue Stinger on Dreamcast is like, hmm, imagine hanging out on an island full of monsters. You're Elliot Ballard, a rescue guy who gets stuck on Dinosaur Island. It's monsters galore, and Elliot teams up with some other survivors in this alien Nephilim to get to the bottom of it all. It's got this old-school 80s action movie vibe, which is pretty cool. Playing the game is all about action and adventure. You can be Elliot or this other guy, Dogs Bower, exploring this huge 3D island. You're unlocking new places, solving puzzles and fighting off monsters. There are weapons to to pick up or buy, and the game lets you switch between different camera views. It's super fun and gets intense, especially with all the tough enemies and crazy environments. What makes it awesome on the Dreamcast is the mix of action, a bit of horror and sci-fi stuff. You get to roam around everywhere, from harbors to labs and malls, fighting with weapons and just trying to survive. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a roller coaster of a manga series, diving into a world where supernatural forces mix with the real world. It's about the Joestar family, each with a star-shaped birthmark and a knack for attracting bizarre adventures. They use stands, these awesome spirit powers, and Harmon energy, battling everything from vampires to ancient humanoids and beyond. Each part of the series introduces a new JoJo and ramps up the weirdness and the action. Gameplay-wise, imagine this in a Dreamcast game. You'd be hopping across different timelines, using stands in epic battles and unraveling complex storylines. Whether you're racing across America in Steel Ball Run or taking down Mafia bosses in Golden Wind, the gameplay would have it, from strategy to action and, oh, <laughs> some really wild supernatural showdowns. On the Dreamcast, the game's art style and music references flourish, and the over-the-top actions are perfect for the console's capabilities. Picture those slick graphics and thrilling gameplay bringing the Joestar's adventures to life, with each button press unleashing stand powers or mastering Harmon techniques. Rayman 2 – The Great Escape Next up is Rayman 2 – The Great Escape. It's like jumping into a crazy cartoon world. Rayman, our hero without arms or legs, has to save his buddy Glowbox in their home from this evil Admiral Razorbeard and his robot pirates. The bad guys bust up the world's core, and Rayman loses his powers and gets napped. The whole game is about Rayman getting his powers back, rescuing pals and battling these pirates. It's a 3D platformer, so you're controlling Rayman through different levels, grabbing these things called lums, cracking puzzles, and freeing friends. You start off pretty basic, but get cooler abilities as you go, like shooting energy balls, helicopter hair for flying, and even rocket riding. There are also these type challenges and bonus levels where you can snag extra stuff. Rayman 2 on the Dreamcast is simply awesome. The gameplay is fun. It's perfect for the console's graphics and controller. The colors are bright, the animations are smooth. Just makes the game pop on the console.
San Francisco Rush 2049 San Francisco Rush 2049 is this throwback racing game that really takes you back. Developed by Atari Games, it hit the arcades in 99 and then landed on Dreamcast in 2000. It's the third in the Rush series. And get this, it's the last one set in San Francisco and the final one on Nintendo consoles. You get to race in a future San Fran and the cars can pop out wings to glide through the air. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? There's also a stunt mode where you score points for pulling off crazy mid-air tricks. Plus, if you're into playing with friends, it's got a multiplayer mode where you can race or battle it out. The arcade version was like a mini theme park ride, complete with force feedback steering and pedals, and they kept updating it, adding new tracks, cars, and even online tournaments for a while. Honestly, this one's a Dreamcast gem because it's just so much fun. It offers that thrill of old-school arcade racing with some futuristic twists. Every time I play, I get a feeling of pure nostalgia with hints of freshness. Yeah, definitely one of those games we should be talking about more. Sword of the Berserk Guts Rage. The next game is Sword of the Berserk Guts Rage. <laughs> and dude, it's pretty wild. We follow Guts, Casca, and Puck as they head to Elfhelm. They bump into this performer, Rita, and save her from some nasty bandits. Then they end up in this castle town where there's this crazy disease turning people into berserk mandragorans. The story gets super twisty with this power hungry ruler, a search for a cure, and some serious backstabbing. It's as intense and dark as the manga with all these deep characters and tough choices. The gameplay is your classic hack and slash style. Your guts, wielding his enormous sword, mowing down enemies, and sometimes you get these quick time events that can change the story depending on if you nail them or not. The fights feel so real and gritty, yeah, just like in the manga. The Dreamcast graphics and controls really make you feel like you're right there in the action. And the quick time events, yeah, they're a cool addition, making Guts' journey feel like you're in a movie or something. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. Capcom vs. SNK Millennium Fight 2000. Capcom vs. SNK Millennium Fight 2000 is like the ultimate mashup of Capcom and SNK worlds. Picture this, it's the year 2000, these two gaming giants, the Garcia Financial Clique and the Masters Foundation throw down this massive martial arts tournament. They're trying to squash their beef. Fighters from all over the world, total legends are lining up to join. It's got everyone buzzing. The gameplay is where it gets really good. They've got this cool ratio system where each character is rated from 1 to 4. You can pick up to four fighters for your team, but their total ratios can't go over four. It makes you really think about your lineup. Plus, they mix up the SNK four button style with two kinds of attack meters the SNK Groove, which is like the king of fighters, and the Capcom Groove, straight out of Street Fighter Alpha. This mix up makes the fight super dynamic and fun. On the Sega Dreamcast, this game is fire. The console nails the game's smooth animations and sick character details. Every move looks amazing, and the Dreamcast controller, yeah, perfect for the fast action. Any fighting game fan has got a Play it. Grandia 2 Developed by Game Arts, Grandia 2 is an amazing RPG that originally dazzled Dreamcast players. Set in a fantasy world, it tells the story of Ryudo, a mercenary known as a Geohound who's hired to protect Elena, a songstress from the Church of Granas. Their journey unfolds in a world still reeling from a titanic battle between Granas, the god of light, and Valmar, the god of darkness. As they travel, they uncover shocking truths about the church and the world's history, leading to unexpected twists and alliances. The game features a turn-based battle system with a unique IP gauge. Characters move along this gauge, and when they reach the action phase, they select and execute moves. It allows for strategic combat, including critical and combo attacks, and the use of magic from equipped mana eggs. Character development is rich, with special moves and spells learned using skill and magic coins. This one shines with its beautifully rendered 3D world and immersive storytelling. The Dreamcast's capabilities bring the game's detailed environments and intricate battle animations to life, making it a standout RPG on the console. It's where Legends clash and hidden truths unfold in a breathtaking fantasy adventure. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 takes skateboarding to a new level, blending sport with punk rock and hip-hop vibes. You go into a 3D urban skate world, stepping into the shoes of Tony Hawk and other pro skaters. The aim? Nail those kickflips, grinds and aerials, or go on a scavenger hunt for objects, all to the beat of a killer soundtrack. The gameplay is smooth and intuitive. You've got this rad turn-based system where you rack up points for tricks. The game's loose take on physics lets you perform increasingly insane maneuvers as you progress. You can 
can customize your skating style, switch footedness and chain tricks together for epic combos. There's a variety of modes like career mode where you complete objectives for cash to upgrade your skills and gear and free skate where you can just chill and skate. Plus, the multiplayer mode is a blast with games like graffiti and horse. On the Sega Dreamcast, this game's an absolute stunner. The console's graphics and controls bring the skate parks to life, making every grind and flip feel real. Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes is a powerhouse crossover fighting game developed by Capcom. It's the third installment in the series, bringing together characters from Capcom's diverse video game franchises and Marvel Comics superhero universe. The game first hit arcades in 1998 and was later ported to the Dreamcast in 1999. The plot is simple but thrilling. Players form teams from the Marvel and Capcom universes to duke it out in intense battles, striving to knock out their opponents. The game plays a tag team based battle extravaganza. Players choose two fighters and can switch between them during battle with the resting character slowly regenerating health. Sounds exciting, right? Well, there's more. The game introduces the variable cross attack, allowing both characters to attack simultaneously and the guest character special partner system, which replaces the traditional character assist feature. With its rich roster, including secret characters and a mix of gameplay modes like arcade, versus and cross fever, the game offers endless entertainment. Ill Bleed. Ill Bleed is this wild survival horror game on the Sega Dreamcast. Released back in 2001, the plot's like something straight out of a horror flick. You play as Ariko Christie, a high schooler and horror junkie. She has a pretty intense backstory with her dad testing horror stuff on her as a kid, and now she's off to this creepy horror-themed amusement park called Ill Bleed to find her friends who vanished there. The park is full of haunted house attractions, each based on a different horror movie, and Ariko's got to navigate through them, saving her friends and uncovering some pretty dark secrets, including about her own family. Gameplay-wise, this is a whole new spin on survival horror. Instead of just fighting off monsters, you're dealing with traps, loads of them. The game's got this unique system where you use a horror monitor to spot and disarm these traps, which keeps you on your toes. You're not just looking out for physical damage, but also managing your character's heart rate and bleeding. It's like a survival puzzle, and every character you play has their own strengths and weaknesses, adding more depth to the gameplay. Now, why is it a great game for the Dreamcast? Well, the game brought something fresh to the table. In a time when survival horror was all about zombies and gore, this game went for a more psychological trap-based approach. Plus, the dark humor and campy B-movie vibe gave it a unique charm. It's like playing through a series of wacky yet terrifying horror movies. All in all, it's definitely a game that any horror or survival game enthusiast should check out, especially if you're into offbeat and quick quirky titles. Toy Commander. Alright, let me break down Toy Commander for you. It has this cool action game on the Dreamcast, developed by No Cliché. Picture this, you're Andy, a kid who's just scored some new army-themed toys for Christmas. But here's the twist. Your old toys, feeling ditched and led by your childhood teddy bear, Huggy Bear, start a full-blown rebellion against the new toys. It's like Toy Story gone rogue. Gameplay? Well, it's super inventive. You're thrown into different rooms of Andy's house. Each room is like its own little battlefield. You control various toy vehicles, like helicopters, race cars, and even tanks. The missions are wild. One minute, you're in the kitchen, using a toy car to roll eggs into boiling water, and the next, you're navigating a race car through mazes. It's a mix of racing, combat, and some really quirky tasks, all from a toy's perspective. This game's like a showcase of the Dreamcast's ability to bring imaginative concepts to life. The way it turns a regular house into a playground for toy battles is something else. Plus, the variety of vehicles and missions keeps it fresh and exciting. It's not just about fighting, it's about strategy and adapting to different scenarios. Bomberman Online. Alright, let's talk about this game for the Dreamcast. It's a part of the classic Bomberman franchise, but this time it's all about multiplayer madness. The plot? Pretty simple, yet cool. Bomberman enters this thing called the Bomblympics on Planet Bomber. He's like the reigning champ, and he's got to defend his title against these other contestants. The Electric Dragons, Red Phoenix, Princess Mariners, you get the idea. Each one of these guys has their own base, and Bomberman needs to run through their trials, get to their throne rooms, and beat them in a duel. Spoiler alert, our hero Bomberman totally nailed 
steals it and keeps his championship title. Gameplay is where it's at with this game. You're dropped into a maze, and the main thing you do is plant bombs to blow stuff up and battle it out with others. There's a bunch of multiplayer modes. Survival rule is classic last man standing. Hyper bomber rule, where you collect power-ups and cause a massive explosion. Submarine rule, which is like real-time battleship. Panel paint rule, where you color squares with explosions. And ring match rule, where it's all about racking up points. Each mode has its own unique twist, making the game super dynamic and fun. Even though the online servers shut down in 2003, the offline multiplayer mode still make it a blast to play with friends. It's perfect for those who love fast-paced, strategic and competitive gameplay. Plus, the Dreamcast handles the graphics and controls smoothly, making the experience even better. Whether you're battling it out in survival rule or racing to colour the most squares in panel paint, this game's a blast, <laughs> literally. The Typing of the Dead The Typing of the Dead is basically a classic zombie arcade game, but with a wild twist. Instead of blasting zombies with guns, you're mashing a keyboard to survive. The plot's straight out of a B-movie. You're in zombie-infested Venice, playing as secret agents James or Gary, trying to stop a mad scientist named Goldman from unleashing his monstrous creations. The gameplay? <laughs> it's hilariously brilliant. You've got zombies and all sorts of creepy creatures coming at you, and the only way to take them down is by typing words and phrases that pop up on the screen. And it's not just basic words. As you progress, things get trickier with longer and more complex phrases. Who thought you could improve your typing skills while fighting off hordes of zombies? It's that originality that got everyone hooked, not to mention it's a blast at parties. Cannon Spike Cannon Spike, also known in Japan as Gun Spike, is like the ultimate arcade masher. This game's a multi-directional shooter that's an absolute blast from the past, combining Capcom's coolest characters with Sega's Naomi hardware. Think of it as a high-octane blend of Smash TV and Commando, but with a huge focus on epic boss battles. Plus, it holds the title of being the last game released for Dreamcast in Europe about going out with a bang. Now, the gameplay is all about intense action. Each character, from the iconic Kami from Street Fighter to Mega Man, has their unique special moves and super specials that need special tokens to unleash. It's like unleashing your favourite Capcom heroes in a bullet hell showdown. The game's nostalgia trip is what makes it such an appealing title on the console. Seeing all these beloved characters from different Capcom universes teaming up in one action-packed game is like a dream crossover come true. Plus, the gameplay is both challenging and super satisfying. Hydro Thunder Hydro Thunder is all about that high-speed, adrenaline-pumping boat racing action. Released by Midway Games, this game takes you through some insanely cool and treacherous waters. You're racing these high-tech powerboats through crazy environments. Think post-apocalyptic New York City and the icy Arctic Circle. The gameplay? It's like Sega's Daytona USA, but on water. You've got boost icons to snag for that extra speed, and this neat feature called the Mighty Hull that lets you knock other boats into the air. Plus, there's the Hydro Jump for some epic aerial stunts. The boats are categorized into easy, medium, hard, and bonus, each with their quirks and speeds, so there's something for every skill level. What makes this one such a hit on Dreamcast is the way it presents such insane speeds with wild track designs. It's not just about racing, but more about mastering these insane environments and using boosts and jumps to your advantage. And let's not forget the satisfaction of unlocking new tracks and boats by nailing those top positions. <laughs> Bangayo. Bangayo is this wild multi-directional shooter where you're piloting a mech through some seriously chaotic stages. Developed by Treasure, it first hit the Nintendo 64 in Japan in 1999 and then got a glow up for the Dreamcast with better graphics, audio and gameplay tweaks. The plot's simple but fun. You're Ricky and Mami taking down criminals using fruit contraband. <laughs> yeah, fruit. With your mech that fires in all directions. Gameplay wise, it's a retro gamer's dream. You're navigating through 44 stages, blasting away at anything that moves and switching between Ricky and mummy for different types of firepower. The Dreamcast version cranks it up a notch with even stronger bullets and up to 400 missiles firing at once. Instead of fruit for power-ups, now you're scavenging through wreckage for upgrades. What makes Bangai Owa hit on the Dreamcast is its sheer intensity and nostalgia factor. It's a throwback to classic shoot 'em ups but with a modern twist. Plus, the satisfaction of unleashing a barrage of missiles and watching everything explode is just unbeatable.
Ooga Booga. Coming in next is Ooga Booga, this quirky game for the Dreamcast where you're battling as tribal leaders or kahunas in a Polynesian style world. The plot is pretty out there. You're fighting for the favor of Ooga Booga, the volcano goddess who creates islands. It's one of those games that's just pure fun and doesn't take itself too seriously. In terms of gameplay, you're hurling shrunken heads, fighting animals, wielding staffs, casting spells to beat your opponents. You start with four basic kahunas, Potty, Fatty, Twitchy, and Hoodoo, each with their own style, like balanced, strong, fast, or spell-focused. And then there are these wild, unlockable characters like a floating skeleton, Abe Lincoln, and uh, even a superhero. The game's combat and humor are wrapped up in a vibrant Polynesian-themed package, so you can understand why it made it to the top 50 Dreamcast games. It's one of the last online games for Dreamcast, and it's fun, fast-paced multiplayer action is just irresistible. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command takes you on an adventure where you're none other than Buzz himself, racing against villains across various planets. Developed by Traveller's Tales and hitting the Dreamcast in 2000, this game's a fun mix of platforming and shooting action based on the animated series spun off from Toy Story. The gameplay's got you dashing to beat villains to the end of each level, where you then duke it out in a boss fight. Along the way, you're fending off enemies and scooping up coins to grab weapon upgrades, shields, and cool vehicles like hoverboards and jet bikes. You've even got help from your partners like Booster stomping down enemies or Myra weakening the villains. It's got that Saturday morning cartoon vibe, making it a blast for younger gamers and anyone who loves Buzz. Super Magnetic Neo. Here we have Super Magnetic Neo, which is a 3D platformer exclusive to the Dreamcast, where you play as Neo, a magnetic robot on a mission. The game's plot is delightfully wacky. Neo's battling the Pinky Gang, led by an evil toddler who's taken over Pow Pow Amusement Park. It's up to Neo to navigate through the park's four themed worlds, jungle, ancient, cowboy, and future, using his magnetism powers to overcome traps, defeat enemies, and restore the park to its former glory. The gameplay is super unique and revolves around Neo's ability to switch between positive and negative magnetic charges. This mechanic lets you repel or attract enemies and interact with the environment in clever ways. You can even turn enemies into magnetized boxes to use as projectiles. The game's full of inventive platforming challenges, minecart rides and animal riding sections adding variety and excitement. It's a game that feels both familiar and new, with its classic platforming elements mixed with a fresh magnetic twist. To sum it up, you can think of it as a platformer got a magnetic personality boost. Fur Fighters. Developed by Bizarre Creations, Fur Fighters is this awesome third-person shooter game with a twist. Released on the Dreamcast in 2000 and later for PC, it's set in a world of cute, cuddly animals. <laughs> but don't let that fool you, the action is intense. The story kicks off with General Vigo kidnapping the families of the Fur Fighters, turning their loved ones into robots and scattering their babies across various locations. The Fur Fighters' mission? Rescue their babies, save their families and take down Vigo. You're navigating huge, sprawling levels from construction sites to a full-blown modern art museum, hunting down baby animals and battling Vigo's henchmen. It's not just about shooting, there's a hefty dose of exploration and puzzle solving too. What's cool is you can switch between different animal parents, each with unique abilities and traits, making strategy a key part of the game. It's a shooter, but with a heart and a sense of humour, offering hours of fun and exploration. So, think of this one as a wacky, action-packed family reunion with guns and puzzles. Test Drive V-Rally V-Rally 2, which is also known in North America as Need for Speed V-Rally 2 on PlayStation and Test Drive V-Rally on Dreamcast, is another top-notch racing game from Eden Studios. The deal here is all about realism and choice. With 26 cars in the Championship Edition and 27 in the Expert Edition, you're spoilt for choice. The game boasts over 80 tracks representing the 1999 season's rallies. You have modes like Time Trial, Arcade, V-Rally Trophy and Championship Mode, which mimics real rallying with various stages. Plus, there's the cool addition of changing weather conditions and day-night cycles. What really makes this one such a cool title on Dreamcast is its realistic driving sensations, fun arcade elements, and exceptional handling. The track design is ingenious, with tracks generated from 3D lines rather than fully modelled environments, allowing for a huge variety of racing experiences. And the cherry on top? A track editor. The design your own rally courses and multiplayer mode for up to four players. In short, this game's like the Swiss army knife of racing games, versatile, realistic, and a whole lot of fun to play with friends. Very good. 
D2 is this eerie survival horror game for the Dreamcast, developed by Warp, directed by Kenji Ino. It's a wild ride through a Canadian wilderness filled with monstrous threats. The story follows digital actress Laura, who survives a plane crash caused by a meteorite strike and terrorist attack, only to find herself in a cabin with fellow survivor Kimberly. Laura soon realizes that the crash survivors are mutating into terrifying creatures. It's up to her to unravel the mystery and find a way out. The gameplay in the game is both exploration and RPG-style combat. You explore the wilderness in third person and indoor locations in first person, countering random battles where you can't move Laura but can aim her weapons. Defeating monsters earns experience points, leveling up Laura and increasing her health. She's got a submachine gun with unlimited ammo and a hunting rifle for gathering meat to regain health. Plus, there's this neat feature where Laura can take photos throughout the game, which you can save and view later. It's creepy, captivating and totally one of a kind. Ultimate Fighting Championship 2000 Next up we have Ultimate Fighting Championship which on the Dreamcast is like stepping into the octagon without the bruises. Developed by Anchor Inc, this game's got it all. Realistic fighting, a roster of top fighters from the era like Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz and Baz Rutten captures the intensity of the sport. Gameplay is pretty cool too, you feel like you're right in the middle of a UFC bout. The game excels in its lifelike presentation and the excitement of a real fight. Each fighter's style is well represented, so whether you're a fan of stand up or ground game, there's something for you. What makes this game a knockout on the Dreamcast is its authenticity and depth. It's not just about plain brawling, but requires strategy and skill, which are key factors. Plus, the Dreamcast version was praised for its graphics and smooth gameplay, making it feel way ahead of its time. So, in a nutshell, it's almost like having UFC tickets that's live in your living room. Packed with absolute thrilling gameplay, this game's authentic and hands down one of the best fighting experiences on the console. Seaman 1999 Seaman for the Dreamcast is not your average virtual pet game. Developed by Vivarium, it's quirky, it's got dark humour, and it uses the Dreamcast microphone in a way no other game does. Imagine caring for a sassy, talking fish with a human face. That is Seaman. The gameplay is about nurturing this odd creature through its bizarre life cycle. You start with an egg and watch it evolve from a mushroomer, which is a sort of parasitic fish thing, to a gillman, which is a fish with a human face, then to a podfish, and finally a frogman. Each stage has its own needs and ways to interact. You control the tank's environment, feed your Seaman, and engage in weird conversations using the microphone. The game operates in real time, so neglecting your Seaman for too long? <laughs> Not a good idea. The game's like nothing else out there. You'd literally be having conversations with your virtual pet and its responses are often hilarious and unexpectedly insightful. Marvelous verdict. And that's a wrap on our epic rundown of the top 50 Sega Dreamcast games. From tearing up the streets in Crazy Taxi to you can get out in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Each game we've cruised through today wasn't just a way to kill time, they were our ticket to countless hours of fun and adventure. The Dreamcast might have been short-lived, but man, did it leave a mark with these gems. We hope this trip down memory lane has been as much of a blast for you as it was for us. Maybe it even sparked a desire to dust off that old Dreamcast and relive the glory days. So keep on gaming, and remember, no matter how many new consoles come and go, these classics will always have a special place in our hearts. Catch you in the next video, and remember to stay awesome. Yeah. Who did it?